According to Ruler Analytics, the average website conversion rate across 14 industries is 2.9%. Over the last 10 years, we've analyzed around 35,000 websites and we know that there are many reasons that your conversion rate for your business in your industry might be lower or higher than this. But if you wanna get to and then past 2.9%, watch this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. Let's start by talking about your forms. Yes, lots of websites use forms to generate leads and with form conversion rates in some industries being as low as 0.6%, there is often some low hanging fruit to pick up in how your forms are structured. If you're offering a demo of your software or consultation for a service, then you might need to ask for lots of information, more information than if you're just asking someone to sign up for a mailing list, for example. One of the ways that you can improve conversion rates in this case is by reviewing how you ask for that information. Often a form that looks like this where we're asking for lots of information up front, particularly if we're not explaining clearly what the user is going to get as a result of it, can convert very poorly. People just see the form and go, uh, rather not. If your website visitors know what it is that you do and they just want to become a lead, they'll have a much higher tolerance for these types of forms. But if like in this example, you might be driving cold traffic to this page that doesn't yet know what you're about, you might wanna reduce some of these fields if you want to improve your conversion rate. Lots of form building software actually allows you to break up longer forms into different screens. This makes it a little bit less intimidating for the visitor and in some cases can actually be quite fun. Check out this form from Noom. As you're going through, it asks you lots of questions, but anytime it asks you for sensitive data, it actually congratulates you on submitting that data. Then because they know it's a long form, they've added in these steps that demonstrate social proof as you're going to keep you pushing on to the end. Now you can see we're only part of the way through this form, but it actually feels like I'm getting value out of this because it's giving me information, it's giving me statistics, and it's congratulating me along the way. This is a very different experience to a pure lead generation form, which is asking just for loads of personal details without any information about how those details are gonna be used. So review your forms and see if there are any fields that you can take out. If you need to ask lots of information to pre-qualify leads, for example, can you break up the form or even add in these interim steps to congratulate people and give them statistics and social proof about why they should continue. And by the way, let us know in the comments, do you have any form X? Anything that you see on a form which you know you're not gonna fill out? Let's talk about calls to action or CTAs. We talk a lot about CTAs on the Exposure Ninja channel and with good reason. These days, most of the websites that we're sent to review do have CTAs on them, but often, unfortunately, they suck. Let's look at the CTAs on this website for height. No affiliation to Exposure Ninja, by the way. Above the fold here, we've got two CTAs, Shop Vitals, Shop Biotic. That's all well and good if I know what Vitals and Biotic are. If I don't, this is completely meaningless to me and I'm already feeling confused and I've only just landed on the page. What could they do instead? Well, they could actually take you through a bit of a process to help you find the right supplement for you based on what you're looking for. That would do the job of both collecting your data whilst also funneling you to the right product in a really simple and straightforward way. You'll often hear us talking about having two CTAs, dual CTAs, one being a higher commitment option and one being a lower commitment secondary CTA. It's exactly what we've done on this website that we built for Transparent. The primary CTA is book a discovery call. But if you're not ready for that yet, if that's too high commitment, we want to encourage people to explore the company's services instead. So review the CTAs on your your website and check that they're at the right stage for where your visitors are at. Are they asking for too much information or do they require too much prior knowledge for your website visitors to actually be able to complete? You may want to offer a secondary CTA for people who aren't ready to take that leap yet or don't know enough about your product or service to be able to do that thing. All right, let's talk about bad copy. The internet has been full of bad copy since forever, but Thanks to AI, bad copy is more common than ever before. Now, we're not saying you can't use AI to help you draft copy. You absolutely can. But we would never publish AI written copy in a situation where you actually want to convert someone to become a sale. AI copy just isn't there yet. It's not as good as what a professional copywriter can come up with. One of the issues with AI generated copy is that it tends to pad it out with nonsense words that aren't designed to do anything other than sound or authoritative and expert by adding in jargon and other confusing stuff. This runs counter to the principles of converting visitors because visitors like 
clarity. Now this runs counter to the principles of conversion rate optimization, because in order to maximize conversions, you need simplicity and clarity. In the worst cases, bad copy makes it actually impossible to figure out what a business does. Some of the worst examples of this are in healthcare. For example, on this page here, it's genuinely really difficult to figure out exactly what the business does because they're talking in such broad jargony terms, along with the good old obligatory iceberg picture, and it's presented in such an unstructured way. It feels like you're just digging through a swamp of jargon just to try and figure out what this product is. Now you might say, yeah, but Tim, this is a B2B business and B2B is all about technical language. Yes, that's true. But this study from Scribewise found that actually 59% of buyers said they wanted content that empathizes with and provides solutions to their specific pain points. 72% of people just want you to cut the crap and get to the point with straightforward, easy to understand language. With that in mind, let's take a look at this page from Samsung Healthcare. This page is all about accelerating intelligence. Just in case you missed it, here it is again. We're talking about streamlined workflows, which sounds great, but they don't talk specifically about exactly how they do this. This section is headed benefits, but all I see is features and actually using their own trademark featured names, which may or may not mean anything to the target customer. This page comes across like it was written by someone who's really proud of the features of this product, rather than thinking from the potential buyer what their priorities would be and how they map their product's features to this customer's priorities. Now contrast this with this page from Overture. Yes, there's still a lot of technical language, but you can tell that this page was written more for the customer and their pain points. They're focused on something that actually means something to the buyer and the end user. And smartly, they're talking about things that everyone would understand, human survival data. In some ways, human survival rate is the perfect metric to use. Everyone on the planet understands the importance of that. The testimonials that they use are plain language and relatable. And by showing the pictures, they also add a personal touch. Now, even if you think your website isn't full of jargon, it's always worth reviewing your highest traffic pages, particularly those pages that get a lot of cold traffic. Is there any way that you could simplify your language even further and explain its benefits in terms that make sense to the user or buyer? Sometimes people feel that they are too close to the business or the products or services to be able to judge these things. They're too familiar. It all seems too obvious to them. A great thing to do here can be actually to go and talk to your customers and run your copy past them. See if they understand it and see what other questions they would have which aren't being answered. It can also really help to get an outsider's perspective. We have a free service that we can offer you if you'd like an outsider's perspective on your website, as well as some suggestions on how to improve your conversion rate further based on your business in your industry. All you need to do is go to exposureninja.com forward slash review and request a free website and marketing review. We'll do an analysis of your website and your current digital marketing and we'll suggest priorities that you can implement over the next six to 12 months to significantly increase the leads and sales volume that your website generates. This service is completely free of charge, but it's not available to everyone. You do need to apply for this. Not everybody is eligible. So to apply, go to exposureninja.com forward slash review. Okay, let's talk about pop-ups. Everyone's favorite, least favorite marketing tool. The reality is when pop-ups are done right, they can be amazing for your conversion rate optimization. Of course, one of the reasons that pop-ups can sometimes feel a bit icky is because they are so overused or used so poorly a lot of the time. I don't know if you tried to go on a local news website over the last couple of years, but wow. Some websites, like everyone's favorite IP pirates and environmental non-heroes, Sheehan, are so aggressive with their pop-ups, you actually have to clear a pop-up before you can get into the site. But the reality is pop-ups work, and that's why you still see them used today, including by Exposure Ninja. In fact, the average click-through rate for mobile is 10%, the average click-through rate on desktop is 7.09%. And often, for example, when they're an exit pop-up, these are incremental conversions that you might not have got otherwise. People do engage with pop-ups and they will share their details if they see enough perceived value. I really like this one from Real Superfoods where they offer 15% off and a free bottle, but only on your first subscription. So you do actually have to buy a subscription in order to get the free gift. The thing about pop-ups is you've got to test them. Check out this really simple one that we use for one of our clients. Do you have a matter which our lawyers can help you with? No or yes. If you click yes, guess what? You go straight to their live chat 
to fill in a form. So I would keep an open mind with pop-ups and you can always test different approaches to see how they impact your conversion rate. If you don't wanna be spammy with your pop-ups, make sure that you're offering something which is attractive enough that people will actually be grateful for the interruption. And of course, if you're using pop-ups but they're not getting a good conversion rate and low click-through rate, then you might wanna review the language that you're using, how much information you're asking from people and what you're offering them in return. CRO is all about a bit of give and take every now and then. Trust signals. They should be everywhere on your website, particularly anytime you're asking people to give you their trust, you should be giving them a reason to give you their trust. Look at this screenshot from that same website. The whole screen is full of trust signals. <laughs> yeah, but Tim, we have a testimonials page on our website. We don't wanna overdo it. Trust me, you need trust signals on every single page of your website, ideally above the fold. Put them on your homepage, put them on your subpage, put them on your about page, put them in your checkout, put them in the middle of your form if you need to. You can't overdo trust signals. You can overdo almost anything in marketing, but I've yet to see a business overdo the use of trust signals. Reviews, case studies, awards, statistics, accreditations, get it all on there. Here's a really interesting landing page for the Focus app, Opal. Check out how much of this page is dedicated to trust. We've got the App Store app of the day. We've got the ratings. We've got the number of people using it. And then we've got this dynamic counter of the number of hours being saved by Opal. This is both a demonstration of what the app does whilst also being a trust signal. Wow. Now, if we were gonna be critical, we'd say there's some issues with contrast on this page and maybe some accessibility problems with gray text on a black screen. But from a trust signals perspective, they get the ninja mark of approval. Generally, I'm a big fan of the accounting software Zero's use of conversion rate optimization principles, including trust signals. Look at how much they're using it on their homepage. We've got awards, we've got review stars. As we scroll down, we see people's faces, which are a big trust signal. Then we've got more reviews. Then we've got stats about how many businesses use Xero. Then we've got some specific case studies. That's really great, but that's the homepage. On this product page, they seem to have forgotten all of that. We've got information about the product, but we don't have any trust signals at all until we get four scrolls down. And that's it, what's going on? We need to make sure there are trust signals on every single page of your site, particularly those that you're driving cold traffic to or where people are gonna be making a decision. So double check your website's pages, particularly those high traffic pages. And if you've got a page with a particularly low conversion rate, you might wanna have a look at that as well. All right, finally, we have mobile optimization. It's fairly common that we would see quite a large disparity between conversion rate on desktop and conversion rate on mobile. And that's an issue because so much traffic online is mobile. Of course, most websites these days are mobile responsive, meaning they resize to any screen size. But even if your site is mobile responsive, you need to think about the order and the layout of that site on mobile. Let's take a look at an example here. This is Alcidion Healthcare. On desktop, we see we've got this big hero section, which takes up a lot of space. In fact, there's a lot of vertical space that's not really being used here. So they could compress this a little bit, but you can scroll one page, scroll down and see all of the solutions. Now, if we contrast this to how it looks on mobile, all of a sudden that hero image looks really indulgent. It's now taking up the majority of the screen. We've got to scroll down to even see the copy that accompanies it. And then we've got to keep scrolling to see the solutions that they offer. Because of the padding on these solutions, there's loads of wasted space here. So on mobile, the user is forced to scroll endlessly to find the information that they need. So make sure you check your website on mobile as well to make sure you don't have any accidental responsive issues around ordering, stacking, or extra padding that damage the user experience. So as you can see, there are a few reasons why your website might not be converting as well as it could or should. CRO is never a one and done thing. This is gonna be something that you're gonna continually test and experiment to find ways to improve your conversion rate. But some of the things that we've covered today are the most common issues we see from the websites we're sent to review at Exposure Ninja. Let me know in the comments, what are your conversion rate bugbears and what changes have you made to your website over the years that have made a big difference to that all important metric. And before you 
before you go, remember, these are just some of the ways that you can improve your conversion rate. But often one of the issues that we see is that people haven't really thought about the different stages of the marketing funnel that people are coming through their website from. It's really important to get a handle of this funnel and make sure that your site is designed to cater to people at different stages. Watch this video to get an overview on exactly how this works and how to do it. Until next time, see you soon.